Hello everybody, welcome back. So here we're looking at a familiar problem again, and we're expanding on this same model that we started back in the first section of module 15, where we were looking at how we used age and experience to, to explain variation in salary. We found a big problem with multicollinearity there. We got rid of the variable experience because it wasn't contributing anything of value to the model. Then in the previous problem, 15-1, 15-2a, uh, we then incorporated this dummy variable, this categorical variable that, that split our sample really into two groups. Either you have a graduate degree or you don't have a graduate degree. And so there we saw that the point estimate of that coefficient told you the difference in the average salary between those who don't have the graduate degree and those who do have the graduate degree. And what we found there is that to incorporate that category, we had two categories, and to distinguish between those two categories, I needed one categorical variable. We defined that variable as taking on the value of zero for the base case, which was you did not have the degree, and then it took a value of one if you did have that graduate degree. Well, now here we're going to take it a step further because we've already found having a graduate degree was statistically significant. So in this revised model, now we split it up into what type of degree do you have? So we're still looking at salary as a function of age. That's still that continuous variable. But now we're splitting this up into those who have a master's degree and those who have a doctorate. So what we have done here is we've, we still have, we have three categories, right? In the previous model, we had two categories. You have the degree or you don't. And so in that first example, we had, uh, let's, look at, let's look at it like this, don't, this is very simple, and do, so you don't have the, the graduate degree or you do. And we had one dummy variable, x2, and we said this is our base case, and if you do, the dummy takes on a value of one. Well, now we've, we are expanding on this. Now we have two dummies, x2, and x3. Our base case now, as it says here, those are the bachelor's degree represent the base case. So here's, oops, here's our bachelor's degree. If you have a bachelor's degree, both of those dummy variables take on a value of zero. If you have a master's degree, well, the dummy variable MA equals one if you have a master's degree, zero otherwise. So it's a one and X3 takes on a zero. And if you have a doctorate, then the dummy variable PhD takes on a value one, zero otherwise. So there's our coding in our data set for whichever software you were using. Each observation that corresponds to an individual who has a bachelor's degree, both of our dummy variables are given a value of zero. That's an observation that belongs in the base case scenario. Each row, each observation that corresponds to an individual that has a master's degree, whose highest level of educational attainment is a master's degree, the variable x2 gets a value of one zero otherwise. Those observations that correspond to somebody who has a, a doctorate as their highest level of educational attainment, x3 takes on a value of one and it's zero otherwise. So what we have done here is we have split our sample not into two groups, but now into three groups. So whereas before I might have had one big blob of dots, well, now I can distinguish among those blob of dots. Now I can distinguish three different groups. I have one 
linear relationship that shows the, the relationship between age and salary for one of my groups. For my second group and for my third group. So we're, we're splitting that sample into multiple categories. The coefficients on our in our estimated regression equation tell us the difference in average value between that particular level of the category of the categorical and the base case. So let's go through our output here. And again, I'm not going to go through filling in a bunch of blanks. We've done that. We've got lots of practice with that. Let's focus now on understanding these numbers. So once again, we have a good R squared. And our adjusted R squared is good. They're high. Our R squared shows that having that graduate degree, having a master's, having a, uh, a PhD, that contributes, uh, that, that explains 92% of the variation in a person's salary. So again, incorporating information about a person's age and about the type of graduate degree that they have captures 92% of the variation in salary. Our estimated regression equation here, negative 112.44, there's that age variable, There's the master's, and there's the doctorate. So what do all of these values mean? Well, here again, we have this marginal effect, because age is that continuous variable. So each additional year older that a person is, that corresponds with an average increase in salary of $47,290 or $47.29,000, right? I know that because salary is measured in thousands of dollars. So you're one year older, average salary increases, or the average increase in salary, 47.29,000 or $47,290. The ones that are new for us are these coefficients on these categoricals. It's important to remember that these are not marginal effects. It's not each additional degree. This is the point estimate of the difference between our base case and whichever level we're looking at. So here I'm looking at master's degree. This red and green is just an awful combination of colors. So if I look at the master's group first, having a master's degree, the average difference in salary between somebody who has a master's and somebody who has a bachelor's degree, those with a master's on average earn $447,340 more than somebody with a bachelor's degree. So again, I'm comparing that level of interest in their categorical, which here is the master's degree, and it's compared to the base case or to the reference case. So having a master's degree or those with a master's degree earn an average 447.34,000 or I would say $447,340 more than those with a bachelor's degree. Now the next one is also a point estimate of difference between that level of the categorical of interest, which now is PhD, compared to the base case. So those with a doctorate, those with a PhD, they earn an average $490,930 more than somebody with a bachelor's degree. So always relative to whatever is that base case scenario. And of course, all of our intervals, these are all estimated the same way. I'm 95% confident that each additional year older that a person is, that contributes between $40,620 and $53,960 in average salary. And again, if you're wondering why I'm talking in thousands of dollars, it's because our salary here is measured in thousands of dollars. So this is 40620 
this is 53,960. I'm 95% confident that the difference in average salary between somebody with a master's and a, and a bachelor's degree is between $237,170 and $657,510 in favor of having a master's degree, right? I have to make it clear which one is the larger of the two. So having a master's degree contributes an average $237,000 to $657,000 above having a bachelor's degree. The doctorate, having a PhD, contributes an average of $299,000 to $682,000 more than having a bachelor's degree. So, keep in mind, we're always going relative to the base case. Of course, the question is going to be, well, what if I want to look at doctorate versus master's? Well, if we come down here to our drawing, so we have our point estimates, right? We have, this one is actually negative. The next one is B1 plus, not B1, B0 plus B2. And the next one is B0 plus B3. So where this one, that Y estimate of just the base case is negative 112. Well, the next one is adding that 112.44, adding the point estimate on masters, 447.34, and so that gives me this point estimate of that intercept, three three thirty four point nine, and the next one is one hundred and twelve thirty four negative one hundred and twelve plus four ninety point ninety three. So that gives me here a y intercept three seventy eight point fifty nine. So those point estimates are always relative to the base case, right? These differences here, that difference is that first coefficient, that 447.34. This difference here is the second one, that's the 490.93. So what if I want to know what is the difference between bachelor's, uh, sorry, what is the difference between master's and PhD? I want to know this vertical difference. Well, I just look at the difference in those two intercepts. B0, B3 minus B0, B2. And of course, what am I left with? B3 minus B2. So if I look at the difference between those two, 490.93 minus 407.34, well then that gives me the point estimate of the difference between these two levels of my categorical. So on average, having a doctorate earns $43,590 more than having a master's. So again, these point estimates are the difference in the value of the dependent variable between the categorical level of interest compared to the base case. If I want to know the difference between any two levels of that category, such as the difference between PhD and the masters, well, I look at the difference in those point estimates, and that here gives me the difference between those two levels, 43.59. Going through our interpretation here, everything comes up statistically significant, our model is statistically significant, and each of our independent variables, the continuous and the categoricals alike, 
everything is coming up statistically significant. They are together explaining a statistically significant amount of the variation in salary and individually each of our individual independent variables is statistically relevant, is statistically significant in its ability to explain some of the variation in our dependent variable. They are correlated with our dependent variable. Okay, I think that's it. We have gone through everything for this model. We have certainly improved on this model compared to the very first one that had multicollinearity and then we took out experience and we were left just with age. Now we've refined it even further. We've added these different categories. Our adjusted R squared and our R squared have all gone up. Go back and you'll have to look at those previous exercises, 15-2A and I think 15-1B, I believe. Okay, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope that this was helpful. Take care. Bye-bye.